Hello and welcome to my second video on coronavirus and today we will be talking about coronavirus and immune suppressive drugs or the patients who are immunocompromised. Before watching this video, my request is to watch my first video on coronavirus where I have given introduction about coronavirus and some basic facts about coronavirus and then this video would make more sense for you. I have been getting many questions on coronavirus or COVID-19 and immune suppressive state or patients who are on immune suppressive drugs, whether those are autoimmune disease or transplant uh, patients and, and otherwise immune compromised patients. So I will take today all those questions one by one. So this video will be in question answer format. First, we will show you the question and then I will respond to that question. If I have common cold symptoms such as running nose, sneezing, headache, do I need to worry about COVID-19? And the answer is mostly not or likely not. COVID-19 has three classic features. One is cough, fever, along with shortness of breath. Most patients would have at least two of these symptoms. Generally speaking, what we are seeing in the reports is cough along with fever makes you think about COVID-19. Otherwise, likely not. Another good question is how does social distancing help us in this crisis of infection? Well, uh, I will show you a clip in a second to explain you how does a social distancing work. So basically what it is, is if you're practicing social distancing, which you should be practicing at this time right now and staying home as much as possible, what happens is the peak of infection that has to happen within a short span of time decreases. That decreases the stress on the medical facility to take care of the sicker patients. By practicing social uh, distancing, what you're basically doing is uh, decreasing the number of infection happening at a particular time. You're prolonging it over a long period of time so all patients can be taken care of by uh, the current available medical facilities. In this video, you will see how infection spreads if no social distancing is practiced which basically means if there is no restriction on movement and person-to-person -person contact, or when people are not staying at home and carrying out life as usual. As you can see, how quickly the infection spreads when everyone is moving. This leads to too many sick people in a short span of time, which makes it difficult for the doctors and the hospitals to handle or to take care of these sick patients especially at the peak of the infection. In the next video, you will see how infection spreads if most people practice social distancing, which basically means people stay at home as much as possible and restrict their movement as well as person-to-person -person contact for a few weeks when the infection is at peak. As you can see, how slowly the infection spread when few people are moving. This leads to what we call as flattening of the curve of infection. Therefore, less number of people are infected at any given time, making it possible and easier for the doctors and hospital to manage fewer sick patients and provide the best care possible. Also note, there is no peak of infection in this case. Should I stop my immune suppressive drug given the fear of COVID-19? And the answer is absolutely not. Currently, there is no reason or indication to hold or stop your immune suppressive drug given the scare or the fear of COVID-19 if you have no symptoms. Obviously, if you have symptoms of fever and cough, then you should hold your immune suppressive drug and talk to your doctor ASAP. This slide shows you the list of immune suppressive drugs that typically I know or I give to my patients with rheumatological diseases. Um, and you can have a look at all the different types of immune suppressive drugs here, including methotrexate, azathioprine, mycophenolate, tacrolimus, um, as well as uh, biological agents such as Humira, uh, Embril, uh, Rituximab, uh, drugs like Actemra uh, or Orencia, as well as some oral agents like Zelgens, 
uh, and so on. You will see that this list does not have hydroxychloroquine or plaquenil, which is uh, a common rheumatological drug because it is not considered as immune suppressive drug. Uh, and another drug that you don't see on this list is immunoglobulin or IVIG uh, because that's also not considered as immune suppressive drug. Should I stop my plaquenil or hydroxychloroquine given the fear of COVID-19? That would be absolutely not necessary. In fact, I will tell you there are cases in which doctors are using hydroxychloroquine or plaquenil to treat patients with severe COVID-19 infection. So stopping hydroxychloroquine or plaquenil would not make sense at all. Should I stop my IVIG or immunoglobulin? Uh, again, the answer is no. Uh, there is absolutely no reason to do that. Only thing I would say is take precautions when you go to your infusion center for your IVIG as much as possible. Keep your distance from people and keep your uh, social distancing as much as possible. What about biological drugs? We know biological drugs are severely immune suppressive. So definitely it does increase the risk of any infection, including COVID-19. But currently the answer is no, I would not recommend you to hold or stop your uh, biological drugs such as rituximab, Embril or Humira. Um, the only thing is if you're going to the to infusion center for that particular drug, you need to be careful and take as much as precautions as possible. Now, I will tell you this also that the one particular biological drug called Ectemra or tocilizumab, which inhibits a compound in our body called IL-6, uh, is actually being used currently to treat patients with COVID-19. Will there be shortage of IVIG or other immune suppressive drug during this crisis? And um, my answer is hope not. So far, we have not seen any indication of slowing the production uh, of these uh, life-saving uh, medications. What should patients with interstitial lung disease or ILD or pulmonary fibrosis do in this crisis? My response is for those patients, because these patients are high risk, they should stay home as much as possible. In fact, I would say that they could get their uh, basic needs uh, like grocery and medication and all delivered by some friends or a family member would be preferable. And the reason is that the prevention is the best way of treating. So if you stay home and don't get infected, interstitial lung disease patients would have much better outcome uh, as compared to person who's walking on the street and has much higher risk for getting infection. I'm a high risk patient, should I take off for next two weeks? Well, my response would be, if, you, if possible, can you work remotely? And if you can work remotely, that's the best way to deal with this. However, if you cannot work remotely, it's worth talking to your employer to see if some other folks who are not at high risk cover your work for next couple of weeks while you can take a, a vacation or time off um, to decrease your risk. Another question was if um, the research or clinical trials are going to be adversely affected. I think they are going to be adversely affected to some extent, but we have been able to deal with it by doing most of our uh, clinical and research visit as well as clinical trial visit through telemedicine and that has been very successful so far. Another very good question is, uh, my rituximab infusion is coming up next week or two, or my uh, Remicade infusion is coming up. Should I go for my infusion or should I simply stay home given my high risk? Uh, my advice would be, if the infusion can be delayed uh, for a few more weeks, it might be good. It might be in benefit of everybody. But if you think it's uh, you're already flaring up because of your next infusion coming up and your disease is already very bad, then perhaps you can go for your infusion, but take all the basic precautions as much as possible. Another very good question is, um, should the high risk patient think that they are doomed? They are going to have a major problem in next several weeks. 
Uh, should they panic? What should they do? And my answer is there is absolutely no reason to think that you're doomed or to panic at all. In fact, the only thing that you really need to do is practice social distancing, all the precautions that we have discussed in last video, and pretty much stay home if you're high risk. That's your best way to deal with this crisis. And hopefully this will uh, resolve in next subsequent weeks to months to come and we'll, back, we'll be back to normal. Another very tricky question is, I'm a healthcare professional as well as I'm a high risk patient uh, because I'm immunosuppressed. Now, uh, that's a very difficult situation, I must admit, because we need healthcare professional or medical professional to be at the front line uh, of fighting COVID-19. But at the same time, we know that many healthcare providers are actually the highest risk to get this infection. And also, if you're Im immune suppressed, you have a higher chances of serious outcome from this. So this is a question that I probably cannot answer you. This is a risk versus benefit and a very personal decision uh, given the call of your duty versus your own personal risk. So you have to make an individual decision here.